boys and girls. It's time for another adventure of Kit Carson. Time to get settled near your television set with a frosty cold bottle of Coke. Unless it's right before mealtime where you are. In which case, it might be better to wait and enjoy Coca-Cola with your meal. Or after you finish eating. But no matter when you drink it, Coca-Cola is always mighty delicious and mighty refreshing. And now for this week's exciting adventure of Kit Carson. The West had its share of well-known bank robbers, but one of the strangest was the last person you'd ever suspect, a banker himself. And he gave Kit Carson plenty of trouble for a while. Here's the list, Toro. Can you think of anything else we'll need? Frijoles, flour, bacon, salt, frijoles, sugar, potatoes, cabbage, frijoles. Hey, I'm hungry and appetite, kid. I think I get something to eat. Not until you get the supplies loaded. And remember, we'll be out with our cattle for over a month, so get plenty of everything. Hey, you better get plenty of money. Bacon is five cents a pound. I'm going over to the bank now. And remember, stay away from Consuelo. Oh, don't worry. First, more than anything comes to supplies. I hope you believe that. Bank robbers anyone's had a look at. Up the hill. My bank couldn't have been more timely. I was really helping myself, Mr. Bradley. My money's in your bank, too. Oh, yes. I'll see if this man pays a full penalty for his crime. Deputy, take this man over to the marshal's office, hold him there, and I'll be over later and press charges. Now, Miss Carson, I'd like you to come in and meet a friend of mine. You know, I think this is a, a very pleasant surprise for you, Mr. Carson. You remember the general and his daughter? Excuse me. General Banning, you're the last person in the world I'd expect to see here. Good to see you again, Kit. How long has it been since Fort Bridger? Three or four years? They don't tell me this is Rose. Mm-hmm. And the little brat in pigtails you taught how to ride. Whew, beginning to feel old. I'm sure glad I decided to settle down on a nice, quiet ranch. Did you take a look in the bag, Kit? Why, no, I haven't. Well, there's over $50,000 in there. You know, every bank in the territory has been held up at least once. And I figured it's just about time to get around to mine. You better get the marshal to put on some special deputies and clean things up. Do you think it's the same gang that's been hitting every bank? Oh, yes, I think it's the same gang of outlaws. Except they've been a little too smart for the law. And today, it proved that there's only one man that can handle that job. And that's Kit Carson. Uh, I'm afraid I'll have to sit this one out. El Toro and I promised ourselves a nice, quiet year of ranching. You can turn down a banker, kid. But you can't turn down the army. That's your country. I don't understand, General. We're building an empire out here. New outposts, new forts. That takes beef and supplies for the men. In turn, that takes cash in the banks for our purchasing agents. The banks are robbed. The money is gone unless it's recovered. 
Yeah, I can understand the importance of keeping the bank safe, but there are a lot of good but men in there's territory. only one Kit Carson. And I am prepared to offer $10,000 in gold as a reward for the capture, dead or alive, of those outlaws. Take a lot of ranching to make that kind of money. Take Kit Carson to help us out. Well, what do you say? Take the job? I well, can't say for sure. I have to persuade El Toro that this is the right thing to do. And I might need your help, Rose. Well, me? How can I help? You don't know El Toro. Pretty girl can make El Toro do anything. <laughs> except perhaps stop looking at other pretty girls. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think El Toro has a chance. We'll just consider that you've taken the job, huh? Well, first I'll go over to the jail and talk to the prisoner. That might be all we need. Come in. What is it, Marshal? That prisoner, the one that robbed this bank. What happened to him? He's dead. Somebody shot him through the window of his cell just a few minutes ago. I think I'll take that job, Mr. Bradley. Pete, the best thing we ever do is settle down on the ranch and forget all about business. Toro, who stands to lose the most when a bank is held up and robbed? What well, the poor, hard-working people who have their lifetime savings in the bank. Kid, I, I wish you'd talk about the cattle and the cows. First, Mr. Bradley asked me if I had looked in the bag. When I said I hadn't, he told me there was $50,000 in it. Yet he never opened the bag to check. Am I supposed to know the answer? Oh, by the way, Toro, there's a young lady and her father coming over for supper tonight. How about some of that famous beans with cheese, huh? A young lady? Well, why didn't you say so? I'm the Chico, Enrique. Get a travel on. <laughs> to trust you and Mopey. It's one thing to pretend that this bank is being robbed along with the others. But if Carson had ever looked in this bag... Well, I still think you're making a big mistake hiring him. Oh, no. When I offered him a reward for the capture of these robbers, that put me above suspicion in Tuscarora. Yeah, it'll put you in jail if he ever finds out. Oh, but he won't. I'm sending him on a wild goose chase in the morning. While you and the boys pick up some loose chains that General Banning is having sent out here from the east. Well, I think that'll be a very good idea. Scent of an angel. Breeze out of the paradises. The breeze got a little too strong. We can't keep stopping every minute if we want to reach Boca Grande before noon. There would be no point in arriving at Boca Grande or any other place in this whole wide world without this little lace handkerchief to remind me of the beautiful Senorita Rosa. She gave this to me last night. Well, put it in your pocket before you drop it again. Si, mm compadre. -hmm. Right over my heart. You know, last night after supper, while you were talking with the general, Rosa and I take a little walk around the rancho. There was a beautiful moon. So I asked her how she liked to become the wife of a great ranchero. And what'd she say? She asked me for my recipe for my beans with the cheese. You know, Keith, a Barbari general would make a bad father's in law. He's a pretty smart fellow. So? See, si, so. Rosa was telling me how he's having the government money shipped into Tuscarora today, hidden inside an old rawhide trunk and the freight wagon. She thought Senor Bradley told us about it. Golly, is that what you fool any outlaws who are waiting for it to show up in some Wells Fargo strong box? Wait a minute, Toro. What Rose said is true. Why is Bradley sending us to Boca Grande? I don't know. He told you, didn't he? Well, he just said he got a tip that the bank of Boca Grande might be held up. Maybe he wants to get us out of the way? Did Rose tell you what time the shipment of money would arrive in Tuscarora? In the regular morning freight hall. If Bradley knows about that money, it's an attempt to get it. We've got all the proof we need against him. In that case, we've been riding in the wrong direction. From now on, we won't be. Let's go. You may be too late. Come on. Here.
I've got it. Let's go. What about the money in the trunk? The trunk's here, all right. The men we saw got to it first. What do we do now? I know that Bradley knew about the shipment of money. You go on ahead, Toro, and get General Benning and take him to the ranch. I'll meet you there as soon as I take care of the freighter and this guard. Muy bien. Okay, gang. We'll be back with Kit Carson in just a minute. Cereal, butter, egg. I guess that's all. But, Mother, haven't you forgotten something? What's that, dear? Why, the most important of all, Coca-Cola. Oh, that's right. We'll need an extra supply for the party. Oh, I almost forgot. The crowd's coming over tonight. Yes, there'll be real refreshment in this house when the gang comes in. And it'll be mighty welcome refreshment, too. Because what everyone wants is a Coke. How about your home? Do you always keep plenty of ice-cold Coca-Cola in the refrigerator, ready to serve to your family and friends? Be sure to pick up a carton or two of Coca-Cola next time you shop. It's so easy to serve right in the bottle and so easy on the budget. And now, let's catch up with Kit Carson. It's inconceivable to me that Bradley is the ringleader of the bank bandits. But you told Bradley that the money was going to be shipped here in an old trunk. Yeah? He's the only man I did tell. That pretty much puts the guilt on Mr. Bradley, doesn't it? I'll have him arrested at once. Ah, no hurry for that, General. Let's make sure we can get the money back before we tip our hand. What do you suppose you would keep it? Well, he's too intelligent a man and trusted to his henchmen. Then you think maybe he'd keep it locked up in the bank safe? Besides being safe, it would be hard to identify what with all the other money he has in that safe. The money was in fresh stacks of 50 and $100 bills issued on the National Bank of St. Louis. It would be easy to identify. Mm, but how are we going to get a look inside that safe? Outside of a bank examiner. Only Bradley himself could get in there. Yes. Only a bank examiner. Or a bank robber. Of course, I had to wait till after the bank was closed before coming over here. Well, I didn't worry about your failure to show up sooner. And I knew that you had better sense than to try and double-cross me. Yeah, but how can me and the rest of the boys know that you're not planning on double-crossing us? You'll get your cut when the time comes. In the meanwhile, all of this money stays right here in the safe. Who is it? It's after hours and the bank is closed. Get Carson, Mr. Bradley. I want to talk to you. I'll be right there. I'm on the way home, Carson. What's on your mind? Everything all right, Mr. Bradley? Why, of course. Why do you ask? I better check the windows and doors. Now, I always close up everything. I don't leave anything open. What have you found out? You know something? Does anybody besides yourself know the combination of that safe? No, no. I'm the only one. But somebody can memorize the combination while watching you open it. Isn't that possible? Well, it's possible, but hardly probable. I make it a point to be alone at a time like that. I'd better check the back door while I'm at it. But, uh, Carson, I demand to know what this is all about. Well, I couldn't say for sure, but El Toro got a tip that there might be an attempt to stick up your bank in the near future. I thought you said you locked up everything. Well, I always go out that way. I lock it after me. 
So you haven't got any idea who might make this attempted robbery, have you? Well, Otoro couldn't find out, but he got the impression there were some of the regular bank robbers. He got tired of waiting for their cut and decided to pick up some easy money. But you'll stay on the job, won't you, Kit? I intend to. Now, just in case anything should happen, I'm counting on you to protect the people's money. They won't lose a penny of it, if I can help it. <laughs> well, good night. Good night. I really got Bradley spooked up. He's ready to stampede. This is the best we could do. Looks very like the one I put the money in. And you'll never guess where we found it, kid. That's not important. It, uh, it belongs to El Toro. And it was full of love letters from the senoritas. Can I help it if they write to me? Oh, it'll be fine, Toro. And we'll take good care of it, I promise you. If everything goes well, I'll need your help around 10 o'clock Sunday night. I'll be at the hotel. Let's go, Toro. we got a lot of work to do. Sick it, I'll get my hat. Senorita, about those love letters. Hurry up, Toro. Supposing something happens to me and I don't come back. Oh, Toro, please come back. Si, sí, senorita. <laughs> Adios, papa. Papa! Sunday with a jackknife when there are a few people in town. That's right. Then what are we breaking into a saddle shop on Saturday with a crossbar? You'll see, Tora, you'll see. But I still don't see how you're going to open the safe with it. Never mind. When the shooting starts, get going. Don't worry. Hey, man, someone just lit a lamp in the bank. Let's have a look. Are you in there, Mr. Bradley? Open up! Someone's in your bank, Mr. Bradley. Don't let him get away. You stay here, I'll go around the back. What are you still doing here? I was just leaving. By the way, did you see a bank robber? 
Only see myself. Well, get going and look for him. Too late. The bank robber escaped the same way he got in, through a hole in the wall in the saddle shop. Has he taken anything? Everybody else be out. I don't know. You'll have to determine that, Mr. Bradley. What's the matter? Nothing. Nothing. Good. Oh, it's just a old empty metal box. I don't know where it came from. It couldn't have come out of your safe, could it? No. But I'm the only one who knows how to get in that. Uh oh. There's something else the robber left behind. Do you know who this belongs to? Dykes. What about Dykes? Oh, nothing. Nothing. Only he's the only man that might have had a chance to learn the combination of the safe. Is this Dykes' knife? Yes, it is. You better open that safe fast and find out what's missing. Hey, what's going on over there? Somebody just robbed the bank. What? Sure did. Took everything out of Mr. Bradley's safe. Bradley's double-crossed us after all. Round up the boys. Thanks for opening the door. Now get your hands up. You too, Marshal. Are you crazy, Carson? Open up, Keith. It's me. Let El Toro in. And don't try anything. Wow, well, you got the safe open up, Toro. I never would believe it. Get General Benning and bring him back here. Pronto. See. Lock the door. Several banks. Fifty and hundred dollar notes from the National Bank of St. Louis. But John will be happy to get this money back. But I thought that... You thought that Dykes had opened the safe. That's what I wanted you to think. As soon as General Banning gets back here, your career as a bank robber will be over. Over here. Open up, Keith. I got the general. Everybody else stay out. Take a look at that money, General. The government funds, all right. What have you got to say for yourself, Bradley? Drop your guns, Carson. I get their guns. Bradley double crossing us. Don't go in there, Dykes. It's rigged to blow up. Here, I'll show you. You won't find it so easy to get that money now, Dykes. most of the money belonging to the various banks that have had to close down. Thanks to you, Kit, and El Toro, it's going to turn out to be a prosperous year for everyone after all. 
I believe you have the list of the banks that are going to get their money back. I gave it to Toro. Rosa, dear mia, those letters mean nothing to me. I swear I never get them anymore. Have you the list of the banks, Toro? Huh? The list of the banks? Oh, I have them here somewhere. Rosa, you got to believe me. I don't care that much for the other girls. What's this? Banks are using sweet-smelling perfume these days. <laughs> no, kid, I think I'll give it her own list. Okay, Tara. Let's see, dear Sweetums, why don't you come and see your little Consuelo Gomez anymore? I wonder what bank wrote this. But Rosa... Oh, you, you, monster, you... And now, before I tell you about next week's exciting adventure, I've got a real treat in store for you. How would you like to see a mighty interesting demonstration of top-notch riding ability? Okay, here we go. Come on. Come on. You're not smiling. Don't pick, amigo. What's the rush? Well, you wanted to see Bill make a Pony Express mount, didn't you? Oh, yeah! Now, watch closely. There. That Bill Williams sure can hold on to a horse. And now, as a special treat for you boys and girls at home, we'll show you exactly how Bill Williams makes his famous Pony Express mount in slow motion. Now, watch his hat fly off. See? Man, I guess nobody mounts a horse better than Bill does. And he sure knows what to do when it comes time for refreshment, too. That mount was magnifico. Oh, that was good. Here, be my guest. Mmm, boy. When it comes to real refreshment, there's nothing like a nice cold Coke. Yes, sir. When it comes to real refreshing things, there's nothing like an ice cold bottle of Coke. But now it's time to give you a tip about next week's exciting adventure of Kit Carson. When several members of a famous California family met violent deaths, it was considered to be a curse. But Kit Carson proved it was something else, as you'll see next week. Be sure to be with us next week at this same time for another thrilling episode in The Adventures of Kit Carson, brought to you by your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. Thank you.